You know, lately I've been trying to find bigger games and it turns out it's not as easy as it sounds. Even here in LA, one of the poker capitals of the world, It's around 11 a.m. on a Thursday, and the biggest game in town is right behind me. This is the Bicycle Casino, and it's a $3,000 max, 510, no limit. Before we jump in there, though, I wanted to tell you guys about one quick thing, and that is that next week, we are having the biggest free roll ever on Club GG. It's a $10,000 free roll, meaning there's 10,000 US dollars up for grabs. And of course it's $0 to play. I'll be in there by the way, trying to get that 10,000. But if that doesn't happen, and let's be honest, it probably won't. I'll just be firing away in some cash games. So maybe I'll see you guys on the virtual felt. If any of that sounds good, feel free to hit the link in the description and sign up. Anyway, that's it for now. Let's get inside and play some real cards. Okay, so change of plans. It turns out there's a 2550 starting on live at the bike and I was able to get a seat somehow. Looks like it won't be a 510 session after all. All right, guys, here we are playing 2550 with the $50 Big Blind Annie. I decided to buy in for $20,000 initially, and we kick things off with pocket fives. There's an open to 300 from late position, and I choose to call in the small blind, not something I do too often, but with the Big Blind Annie in play, I think it's okay. Everyone else folds, and we go heads up to a flop of 6610. I check it over to Mike, and he checks it back. The turn is a king usually a card that will favor the preflop raiser, so I check again, and this time he bets 250. Knowing he could be using this card to bluff, I'm not done with it just yet, so I make the call, and we see a jack on the river. I check it a third time, and now he bets $1,000. Because this river card improves a lot of those turn bluffs, I don't really beat anything anymore, so I just let it go. A few minutes later, there's a limp from early position before Mike raises to 300 once again. I make the call with 8-7 of diamonds on the button, and it's just the two of us going to a flop of 10-6 deuce. Mike checks, and I think it's okay to start betting now, but I decide to check back and play a turn. The 4 of diamonds improves me to a two-way straight draw, so when he checks again, I think it's time to start bluffing. A small bet makes the most sense to me, but apparently... $250 is way too cheap for Mike because he snap calls. Looking for some help on the river, which does not come. He checks it a third time, and I think we have a mandatory bet on our hands, so I fire for $1,400, and he quickly folds. Nice. Nothing too crazy happening yet, but don't worry, that's all about to change with this next hand. There's an open from early position to 150. Four people make the call. And then it gets to me in the big blind with queen jack of clubs. Could go for a squeeze here sometimes, but this hand plays so well multi-way. And the raise came from early position, so I decided to just call and see a flop. 875 isn't exactly what I was hoping for, but apparently no one else was either because the flop checks around. The turn is the king of spades, and once again action checks all the way to the button, who now elects to bet $450. The small blind calls the 450 and it's back to me. Okay, so obviously I don't have anything, so a fold is completely reasonable. But let's just pause for a second and think about what's going on. The button checked back on the flop and then bet a blank turn card. So how strong can his hand really be? I would imagine all his two pair sets and straights would have bet on the flop. So this turn bet just seems like a probe, maybe with one pair or perhaps a bluff. And then we have the small blind who also appears weak after not check raising this $450 bet. After putting the pieces together, I think this is a good opportunity for me to raise myself and apply some pressure. After all, I could have checked some strong hands twice, hoping someone else would bet and give me the opportunity to raise. The only issue is, I don't love trying bluffs with zero chances of improvement. As you can see here, I don't have a draw of any kind, but... Once in a blue moon, we can make an exception, right? The button checked back 
on the flop after five people check to him. So how strong of a hand can he really have here on a turn of a king? He's almost certainly not going to have any straights, no sets. So I check raise to 2,000. The button does make the fold, but the small blind calls again. So we're off to a river on which he checks again. Now all I've got is hopes and dreams, plus a $5,500 bet. Tim decided not to fold his king. He's holding on. Does Mariano go for it? I mean, Mariano is telling the story that he checked the flop with a very strong hand, looking to check raise. Everyone checked. And then he did the same thing on the turn, and this time he got a bet and went for the check raise. So he's continuing to tell the story that he flopped a straight or a set or something like that. And now it's up to Tim. Does he want to call with King 3? This would be a massive call. He does. He goes for the call. King 3. Wow, what a call. Ultimately, my opponent decides on a call with top pair, and of course that's good enough to take it down. Nice call, man. I'm stuck a good amount now, so I add on an additional $20,000 and try to just forget about it. Later on, there's an open from Mike once again, this time to 150 before I look down at Jack-10 offsuit in late position. This hand isn't really good enough to call, but I think occasionally using it as a re-raise is fine. I decided to make it 500, and only he makes the call. We flop a straight draw on queen eight deuce rainbow, so when he checks, I place out a small bet. He makes the call, and we see a four on the turn. He checks again, and at this point, I would size up with all my strong hands, so I think also doing it with weak ones makes sense. I bet $2,000, and this time he does fold. In the next hand, Charlie opens to 150. Middle position makes the call, and I defend the big blind with ace eight. We flop top pair on eight four deuce with two spades. I check, Charlie places a c-bet of 200, player behind him folds, and it's back to me. Against a small size like this, I think we can mix between calling and raising. This time I decide to raise to 800, and after some thought, he makes the call. The turn is a king, which is a pretty miserable card for me, so I check it, but he checks behind. We're off to a river, which comes an interesting one, the ace of diamonds. At this point, I should only have hands that are either very strong or very weak. And for that reason, I think a big bet makes the most sense. So I throw out three chips, totaling $3,000. And now my opponent goes in the tank. 3000 Another polarizing bet. Mariano is trying to get looked up by a hand that suspects Mariano has spades because spades brick. Now it's on Charlie. The thing is, Charlie, you block spades, and you really want Mariano to have spades here. So Charlie makes the wise fold. Eventually, he decides to fold his king, but I'm still happy with how I played this one. Later on, the straddle is on, and I open ace-10 to 300. The button calls before the straddler moves all in for about 1100. Obviously, I'm not folding for that price, especially with the dead money from the button. But instead of calling, I think it's better to put in another raise and try to get the button to fold his hand. That way we only have to battle one player instead of two. That plan works out, and we're off to the races versus King-9 suited. Calls. And there's the king for Vahe. Another king for Vahe. Well, that didn't work out. Let's try again, but this time with Ace-King of Diamonds. Straddle is on once again. There's an open to 300 a caller in middle position, and then I make it 1300 on the button. Action gets back to the initial raiser who decides all his chips are going in the middle, totaling a little over 2000. Middle position folds, and of course I call the extra 700 or so. At this point, he asks to run it twice. I'm usually happy to let my opponents choose, so two boards it is. But it turns out we're up against another ace king, so probably won't be too exciting, right? It's like they're going to rent twice. Oh, wow, heart drop. Oh, wow. 
Mariano hits the second board. Unbelievable. The first board, two hearts. The second board, another two hearts. And a third heart on the turn. Somehow, we make a flush on the second board and end up winning three-fourths of the pot. Not a bad result for being up against the same hand. In the next one, yours truly is in the $100 straddle. Action folds to the small blind who limps in, the big blind folds and I check my option with ace three offsuit. Probably should have raised here, but whatever. Flop comes ace five four and my opponent bets 200. I make the call and we see a seven on the turn. This time he checks and with so many draws available, I place a bet of $200 myself. He calls and the board pairs on the river. This is where the hand gets weird because now he chooses to lead for $900, nearly a pot sized bet. Okay, I have no idea what this means. Sure, a bunch of draws missed, but would he really play those hands like this? It seems like such a ridiculous river to attempt a bluff on. And if it's not a bluff, well, I don't really beat any hands that are betting for value. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to do. And usually when that's the case, I just end up putting in the chips. And yeah, Mariano just came just came to the same conclusion. The whole, the whole line doesn't make a whole lot of sense. However, it's not like it's a slam dunk call. It's still uncomfortable. A few rounds later, I open 6-5 suited to $300. Action gets to Mike in the straddle who makes it $1,500. With a hand like mine, I'm happy to call in position and see what develops. Ace 4-3 gives me an open-ended straight draw, so when he bets 700 of course I make the call. I'm also considering bluffing if a third diamond appears, but Hopefully it won't come to that. The turn is the king of spades and now he bets 2700. Mike hasn't shown this much strength all night so I get the feeling he's got a hand that won't fold even if diamonds do arrive on the river. So with that in mind it feels like the only way I'm winning this one is if I actually hit my straight. I end up just letting it go but looking back I think a call would have been a bit better. I don't know. Oh well. In the next one the straddle is on yet again. There's a limp from early position and I race to 400 with pocket eights. The player on my left calls and then the small blind rips it all in for around 2300. Now action gets to the straddler who calls the all in and of course I call as well. The player on my left folds so we're going three ways to a flop with one of us already all in and a potential side pot between myself and the straddler. Board comes out jack jack 9 and he checks it over to me. I would imagine if he had a bigger pair or some sort of strong hand he might bet himself so I decide to throw out a small bet in order to protect my hand against potential overcards on the turn. My opponent makes the call and we see a 10 on the turn. I'm not sure if we're getting called by a worse hand twice so this time when he checks I just check it back. The river card brings some very reassuring news. The 8 of diamonds improving us to a rather unexpected full house. Straddler checks again and at this point it doesn't seem like he has much, so I place a small value bet of $3,000. Plus, I don't think it's a good idea to bet big in situations where it's tough to be bluffing. Anyway, my opponent wisely folds his ace-king and we end up winning against the all-in player who had ace-queen. So finally, we take down a decent sized pot. As we approach the end of the night, this hand comes up where three players limp and I check the straddle with queen jack. The flop comes queen high, but I choose to check it and now Raj on my left bets 300 bucks. I'm the only one who makes the call, so we go to a six on the turn. I check again and this time he bets 800. My hand is too strong to fold, but too weak to raise, so that just leaves one option. I make the call and we see a 10 on the river. I check it a third time and this time he finally checks back. I turn it over and we win versus queen four. At this point in the night, Raj had been running pretty bad and decided he was sick of it all. It was time for him to go all in blind for about $4,000. As you guys can see here, he does announce all in without checking his cards and well, I'll just let this one play out. Wow, Raj is all in again. All right, Raj. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking him if you let me. Yeah, I can tell you that 
We gotta be in. Oh. Ooh. Casper does not like oh, seeing Mario. Okay, who wants to Oh, Casper did fold. Okay. I would have saw sweated. Yeah, yeah. I thought he called. Raj or Mariano calls. Ace 4, here we go. Ace 4 versus 10 7. Can Raj win again? It's not bad. I gotta hit a bear. I definitely hit a bear. I won. No, no bear. No? <laughs> uh, you me and you took it away. <laughs> Unfortunately for Raj, it was not meant to be, but you gotta give the man credit. Not a lot of people willing to jam 4k blind. Anyway, this was the last hand of the night, so shortly after this, it was time to rack up and head to the cage. I hope you guys enjoy the hands. Well guys, I'm not entirely sure what just happened, other than the fact that that was a crazy session. I thought it was all gonna finally go downhill after that queen jack hand, but things ended up somehow working out. I was in for $40,000, luckily out for 46,700 and change. I forget the exact totals, you guys will see it right here of course. Honestly, I would have been happy just breaking even today after being stuck almost like 10k. So to come out ahead over 6,000, what's there to say? Somehow, some way, this heater refuses to die. And maybe I can carry over some of that good luck into that upcoming free roll next week. Make sure you guys jump in there. Like I said earlier, $10,000 up for grabs. As always, thank you guys so much for the support. If you watched all the way to the end, if you gave this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And uh, until next time, good luck at the tables.